Hello there! My name is Andy Edelman with Prime Mover Communications and in this video we're going to walk through the steps required to reprogram a Protosound 2.0 or a later equipped locomotive sound file. Locomotives equipped with Protosound 3.0 or Protosound 2.0 can be reprogrammed with new sound files and new function files using the MTH DCS system and a Windows PC loaded with MTH's DCS Consumer Loader Program. There are four steps you need to follow to update your locomotive files. One, you'll need to download and install the DCS Consumer Loader to your Windows PC. We'll show you where to find the Consumer Loader on the MTH website and how to install it. Two, you'll need to download the sound file from the MTH website to your Windows PC computer. We'll show you how to find the sound file, explain the differences between the files you download, and show you how to install it into your Protosound 3.0 or Protosound 2.0 locomotive using the DCS Consumer Loader. Three, you'll need to hook up the DCS TIU track interface unit to your Windows PC. There are two different ways to hook up the TIU, depending on which model you own. We'll explain the differences, and detail everything you need to do so. And four, once you've got the Consumer Loader software downloaded and installed, and the TIU hooked up to your Windows PC, and any section of track with the locomotive to be reprogrammed, we'll show you how to move the sound files over to your locomotive. As always, you'll find full detailed instructions for using the DCS Consumer Loader on the MTH website DCS page. So that's it, let's get started. It's quick, easy, and not too difficult. So for step one, let's head over to the MTH website and navigate to the DCS homepage. You'll find that by scrolling down and clicking on the DCS Digital Command System box. Here, you'll find everything you need to learn about DCS and use some of the many resources MTH has provided to users. For our purposes, we need to access the DCS software downloads. So click on the DCS download software link on the far right side of the page. A new window will open up with all of the various DCS software downloads you can retrieve. All of these downloads are free and most require the DCS Consumer Loader Program, the third option on the list. Note that this is a Windows program. There is no version for Apple computers. Click on the Download Now link and fill out the form that appears in the new window. Once you've filled out all the form, click on the Go to Software Downloads page to access the DCS Consumer Loader. So now another box has opened up and we have the DCS Loader Program version 5.00 link automatically listed whenever you get to this page. If you click on the link, it will automatically download the software to whatever location you have specified for downloads to appear in your PC. Depending on your browser, most computers will automatically send the file to a specific downloads folder. However, we recommend right-clicking on the link and selecting the Save Link As option. This will allow you to specify a specific location on your computer for the download to be saved. We recommend the desktop as it's much easier to find the file on the desktop than hunting for it in a downloads folder. So go ahead and click Save once you've selected the desktop. Now we're going to minimize the windows that we've got open so that we can get to our desktop and I'm going to drag it into the window for the video and you see version v5.0.0.exe. This is the download file that fires up the installation program for the DCS Consumer Loader. So we'll double click on this and it's going to open up and unzip self extractor. Now again, we've got a location that defaults 
to uh, a specific drive on your computer, let's go ahead and hit Browse and select Desktop so that the extracted files appear on our desktop, making it easier to get to the next step. So we'll say OK and unzip. And we've got two files unzipped successfully, so we'll close both of these. And I'm going to drag these files in so that they're visible. And now you see there's a setup exe and an MTH DCS consumer loader v5.0.0 msi file. This is the file that actually starts up the uh, install, final part of the installation process. So we'll go ahead and double click on it. And we've got a uh, box that comes up that uh, is part of the setup wizard. We're going to hit next. We're going to agree to the software terms. Uh, of course, you can read all of this uh, legalese if you like. Uh, once you're comfortable with it, hit next, and it's going to specify a location. This defaults to your automatic program uh, files location on your computer, usually on the C drive. Uh, it's fine to go ahead and accept that. Hit next, and uh, everything is ready to go. One more next click, and uh, we're going to get a window that pops up. Uh, you may or may not see this depending on what version of uh, Windows software you're using that uh, wants to make sure you're okay with this process, go ahead and select yes. And the program has now unzipped and installed. Uh, we'll hit close and I'm going to drag over the uh, loader program uh, link. And this is how you fire up the DCS consumer loader program. And we'll use that in step two and three of our process. Now that we have the DCS Consumer Loader installed on your Windows PC, we need to fetch the Protosound 3.0 or 2.0 software for the locomotive you want to update. Simply use the search tool on the MTH website to find your locomotive. Key in the item number from the locomotive package. If you don't know the item number, use the product locator tool on the MTH website and key in as much information as you know. Once you've identified your locomotive in the search results, click on the item number to visit the locomotive's detail page. Once there, click on the support tab to the right to get to the locomotive's download options. It's here that you'll find links to the instruction manuals, exploded views, and sound files. Click on the Protosound 3 or 2 link on the right to send the files to your browser specified file download folder or right click on the link and select save link as to specify where you want the file to be downloaded onto your Windows PC. We recommend selecting desktop for the download location to make it easier to locate the file. Once you've downloaded the file, minimize the browser and locate the file on your desktop. Using a zip extractor like WinZip, double click on the PS3 zip file on the desktop to reveal two types of files. One has an MTH extension. This is the sound file for the locomotive. The other file is another zip file. This is the chain file, which contains all the files needed to operate the locomotive's lights, smoke unit couplers, and more. If you're only interested in changing the sound file, you need only use the .mdh file. If you want to update any of the other settings, you'll load up the .zip chain file in its entirety. It is not necessary to unzip the chain file. We'll explain all of this in step four. Next, we need to hook up the TIU to your Windows PC. To do so, you'll first need to determine which version of the TIU you own. Because DCS first appeared in 2002, earlier TIUs featured an RS-232 serial port for connecting them to a PC for file transfers. When the USB protocol became the dominant connection port on computers, Subsequent TIUs, also known as REVL TIUs, were manufactured with both a serial port and a USB port. 
if you own an earlier TIU that does not have the USB port, you'll likely need to obtain a USB to serial port adapter cable in order to hook up the TIU because most modern PCs no longer use serial ports for connecting other hardware devices. We recommend the DigiKey USB adapter cable UC232R-10 which you can purchase directly from digikey.com. So once you've determined which version of the TIU you own, select the appropriate USB cable for connecting the TIU to the PC. On older TIUs, plug the serial port adapter into the serial port of the TIU. Plug the other end of the adapter into any available USB slot on your Windows PC. If you find that the serial port adapter cable is too short, you'll need a regular serial port to serial port cable to lengthen the cable run. For Revell and newer TIUs, plug the USB cable with the Type-B end, that's the fat end of the cable, into the TIU USB port. Plug the other end of the USB cable with the Type-A end into any available USB slot on your Windows PC. You'll also need a separate power supply, like a Z4000 or Z1000, or any AC output transformer, plugged into the TIU's fixed one input channel. In this example, we're using a Z1000 brick and a 50-1017 TIU barrel jack adapter cable. But don't plug the transformer into the wall outlet just yet. Once you've got the TIU hooked up to the PC, and to the power supply, you'll need to hook up the TIU fixed one output channel to the track and make sure the locomotive you're planning on reprogramming is also on that track. We recommend connecting to a short section of track rather than to your layout. It's also important to make sure that the track surface is clean as that will facilitate a better connection between the locomotive and the TIU for the transfer file process. Now we're ready to upload the PS3 or PS2 code to the locomotive. First, start up the DCS Consumer Loader by clicking on the DCS Consumer Loader link on your desktop. If required to grant permission by Windows, go ahead and click Yes. Once open, you'll see an interface with a number of buttons running across the top. These buttons trigger various options to reprogram the DCS hardware, like the TIU, the remote, and the DCS commander. In addition, you can use the DCS consumer loader to back up your remote settings and to reprogram other remotes with the backed up data. Finally, the DCS Consumer Loader allows you to reprogram locomotive sound files, reprogram locomotive chain files, and back up a locomotive's files to the PC. If uploading replacement sound files to the locomotive, select the first button and follow the on-screen prompts. You'll need to navigate to the folder location where you downloaded and extracted the sound files from the MTH website. In our case, it's the desktop. You'll select the file named .mth found in the extracted downloaded folder. From there, just follow the on-screen prompts. If you run into any errors, refer to the operating instructions for the consumer loader. They're accessible in the description link in the Download DCS Software page of the MTH website. Note that reloading the sound files can take quite a while, so grab a Snickers. If you're downloading a .zip chain file to update locomotive settings, like smoke unit controls, you'll need to click the seventh button in the DCS Consumer Loader interface. It's titled Flash follow the on-screen prompts, and navigate to the desktop folder the sound files were extracted to from the MTH website. This time, you'll select the .zip file in the folder.
to download the new chain file into your locomotive. From there, just follow the on-screen prompts. Once the sound or chain files have been uploaded, shut down the power to the TIU and disconnect the cables from the TIU to the Windows PC. Power up the TIU and test the locomotive using the DCS remote handheld or the DCS Wi-Fi app if you have a DCS WIU Wi-Fi interface unit connected to your TIU. As always, you should review the DCS consumer loader instructions before using the program. They are available on the MTH website's DCS page. Just click on the DCS user manuals link and then scroll down and click on the DCS consumer loader program link to open up the instructions. Well, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.